live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 18. Brought to you by Docker and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE, I'm Lisa Martin with John Troyer, we are live from DockerCon 2018 on a stunning day here in San Francisco at Moscone Center. Excited to welcome to theCUBE Chris Brown, the Technical Marketing Manager at Nutanix. Chris, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. So you've been with Nutanix for a couple years, um, so we'll talk about Nutanix and containers. You yeah. have a, a, a session, Control and Automate Your Container Journey with Nutanix. Talk to us about what you're going to be talking about in this session. What's Nutanix's role in helping customers get over this trepidation of yeah, containers? Definitely, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a 20 minute session, so we've got a lot of information to cover there, because I want to go over a little bit about you know, who Nutanix is from the beginning to the end, but the main part I'm going to be focusing on in that session is talking about how we, uh, with our comm product, can automate VMs and containers together, and how we're moving towards being able to you know, define your application in a blueprint, and understand what you're trying to do with your application. You know, one of the things I always say is that nobody runs SQL because they love running SQL. They run SQL to do something. And our goal with the com is to capture that something, what it depends on, what it relies on. Once we understand what this particular component is supposed to do in your application, we can change that. And we can move that to another cloud or we can move it to containers without losing that definition. And without losing its dependence on the other pieces of the infrastructure and exchange information back and forth. So we're talking a little bit about what we're doing today with Com and where we're going with it to add in that Kubernetes support. Chris, we're, we're sitting here in the Ecosystem Expo uh, at DockerCon, and your, your booth is busy, and there's a lot of good activity. Uh, are people coming up to you and asking, uh, do, they under, do they know Nutanix? Do they understand who you are? Do they just say, oh, you guys sell boxes? <laughs> uh, you know, you're both a, you're a systems provider, you're yeah. a private cloud provider, and a hybrid cloud provider. Do people understand that, the, the crowd here, or what kind of conversations are you having? It's actually really interesting because we're seeing a, a broad range of people. Some some customers are coming up, or some people are coming up that they don't realize they don't know that other pieces, places in their company use Nutanix, but they wanted to learn more about us, or they've got some sort of initiative that you know a lot of times it is around containers, around understanding. You know, they're, they're starting to figure out you know how do we deploy this, how do we connect. You know, we, we've got something we want to deploy here and there. How do we do that in a in a scalable way? But we also have some that uh, have have no idea who we are and just coming up like, so you've got a booth and some awesome giveaways. <laughs> you know, what, <laughs> what do I have to do to get that and what do you do? And um, you know, I really, I, I kind of summarize it as, as two main, main groups of people that I've seen is, uh, one of them is the people who've been doing containers for forever and it's, they, they know it, they've been doing it, they, they're very familiar with the command line, they're red, you know, they, any, any GUI is, is, a, is too much GUI for them. Um, and then we've got the people who are, uh, just getting started, they've, been, they've kind of been told, hey, we're, containers are coming, we need to figure out how to do this, or we've got, you know, we need to start figuring out our container strategy. And so they're here to learn and figure out how to begin that. And so that, it's really interesting because, um, you know, those, the ones that are just getting started or just learning, we, we obviously help out a ton because the people who came before had to go through all of the fire, all of the configuration, all of the challenges, and figure out their own solutions. Whereas we can, now we can kind of come in as a little bit more opinionated example of how to, to do these things. So DockerCon, this year, this is the fifth DockerCon. They've got between 5,000 and 6,000 people. I was talking with John earlier and Steve Singh as well. That I was really impressed when I was leaving the general session. It was standing room only a sea of yeah. heads. So they've got, obviously, developers here, right? Sweet spot. IT folks, enterprise architects, and execs. You talked about Nutanix getting those, the two polar opposite ends of the spectrum, the um, container, lovers, the ones who are the experts, and the ones going, I know I have to do this. <laughs> I'm curious, what target audience, uh, I mean, are you talking to that goes, hey, I'm tasked with doing this. Are those developers, are those IT folks? Are you talking with execs as well? Give us yeah. that mix. Uh, for the most part, they are you know, I, IT folks, you know, traditional operators, um, who are trying to you know, figure out this new shift in technology. And uh, you know, some, we have talked to some developers, and, given, you know, and, and it's actually been interesting to have speak with developers because, you know, in, in general that's not, it hasn't been Nutanix's traditional audience, you know, we sell, we've sold this private cloud infrastructure, you know, to develop, but developers have been, we, a few developers I have talked to have gotten really receptive and really excited about like, what we can do and how we can help them do their job faster by getting their IT people mm -hmm. on board. But for the most part it would be traditional, you know, IT operators who are, who are looking at this, this new technology and, you know, giving it kind of a little, little squinty eye and trying to figure out where it's going. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, with any shift in IT, there is never a time when something is completely sunset. 
I mean, people are still using uh, mainframes today. People will be using mainframes forever. People are just starting their virtualization journey today. They're just going from bare metal to VMs. So, and then even with that shift, there's always something that gets left behind. So they're trying to figure out how can we get used to this new, this container shift, because at the end of the day, not everything is going to be containerized because there's just simply some things it won't be able to, or they, they'll, they'll scope out the project and then it'll end up falling by the wayside or budget will go somewhere else. So they're trying to figure out how they can understand the container world from the world they come from, the VM-centric world. And then, you know, it's really interesting to talk to them and to show them how we're able to bring those two together and really, you know, give you, not only bring the container journey up another step, but also carry your VMs along the way as well. Chris, Nutanix is at a, the center of a, a several different transitions, right? Both, both uh, old school hardware to kind of hyper-converge, but not now also kind of private hybrid cloud, uh, you know, to, to more kind of multi-cloud, hybrid yeah. cloud. When we're not at DockerCon, so uh, when you're out in the field, how real is, is multi-cloud, how real is containers in a normal enterprise? Definitely, so multi-cloud is, is uh, very hot topic for sure. Everyone, you know, it, there is no comp, no IT department that doesn't have some sort of cloud strategy and or uh, you know analyzing it or looking at it. Um, the main way that we get there, or one of the core tools we have, is is Com once again. So, and I'm, I'm obviously biased because as um, that's my wheelhouse when in, in marketing. So I talk about that day in day out. Um, but w with Com, you can add, we we support today AHV and ESXi both on and off Nutanix, as well as AWS, AWS GovCloud, and GCP. And you know, Azure's coming in down the line, that's where Kubernetes will come in as well. So we see a lot of people looking at this and saying, hey, you know, we, we do want to be able to move into AWS, we do want to be able to move into GCP and use those clouds or unify them together. And so Com lets us do that. Another, there's a couple other uh, prongs to that as well. Uh, one of them is Beam, uh, Nutanix Beam, which was a product we announced at .next last month, which is around uh, multi-cloud cost optimization. Uh, Beam came from an acquisition that uh, uh, bought metri uh, the company was called uh, Milinjar, I'm probably saying that horribly wrong, <laughs> but uh, made a product called Botmetric, which we've rebranded re and are integrating into the platform as Nutanix Beam. So what that allows you to do is, you can, it's provided as a SaaS service, so you can, you can go use it today, there's a trial available, all that. You give it uh, AWS credentials and uh, it reaches out and takes a look at your billing account and says, hey, uh, we noticed that these VMs are running 50% you know, of the time at uh, you know, no capacity, or they're not being used at all. You can probably cut that down, shrink these and save it. Or, hey, we noticed that in general you're using this level, this baseline level. You should buy these in reserved instances to save this much per month. And it presents all that up in a really easy to use interface. Um, and then, depending on how you want to use it, you can even have it automatically go and resize your VMs for you. So it can say, hey, you've got a, uh, you know, a T2 medium or, uh, or an M2 medium running. It really would make a lot more sense as a, you know, an M2 small. You can, it'll give you the API call, you can go make it on your own, or you can have, if you give uh, a the uh, authorization, of course, it can go ahead and run that for you and, and just downsize those and start saving you that money. So that's another uh, fork of that, the multi-cloud strategy. And the last one is uh, one of the other announcements we made around uh, last month, which was around, excuse me, uh, Extract for VMs. Um, so Extract, uh, is, a, is a portfolio of products. We've got Extractor DBs where we can scan your SQL databases and move them into ESXi or AHV, both from bare metal or wherever the SQL database is running. Uh, Extractor VMs allows us to scan ESXi VMs and move them over to AHV. And then we're taking Extractor VMs the next step and being able to scan your AWS VMs and pull them on back on-prem if that's what you're looking for as well. So that's right now in beta and they're working on uh, fine-tuning that. Um, and because at the end of the day, it's not enough just to view and manage. We, need, we really need to get to some place where we can move workloads between and put the workload in the right place. Uh, because really with IT, it's always a balance of tools. And there's, never, there's never one golden bullet that solves every problem. You know, you, every time a new project comes out, you're, you're trying to choose the right tool based on the expertise of the team, based on the, what tools are already in use, and based on policy. So uh, we want to be able to make sure that we have the, the tool sets across that you can choose and, and change those choices later on and always use the right thing for the particular application you're running. Choice was um, a big theme this morning during the general session where Docker was talking about choice agility and security. 
Um, I'm curious, with some of the things that were announced, you know, they're talking about the only multi-cloud, multi-OS, multi-Linux. They also were talking about, they announced this federated um, containerized application management, saying, hey, containers have always been portable, but management hasn't been. I'm curious what your perspectives are on some of the, of the, the um, evolution that Docker is announcing today, and how will that help Nutanix customers be able to successfully navigate this container journey? Definitely. And, <clears throat> You know, feder federation's critical, you know, being able to, uh, m container management in general is always um, a challenge. One of the things that I've heard time and time again is that getting RBAC to work through Kubernetes has always been very difficult. <laughs> uh, and so get getting that in there, getting, that, that is such a, a basic feature that people expect. So getting the ability to uh, properly federate out roles or federate out authentication is huge. Um, you know, there's a reason that SAML, you know, took the world by storm, is that nobody wants to manage passwords. You want to rely on some external source of truth. Being able to pull that in, being able to use some cloud service and have it federated against, you know, having Docker federated against other pieces is, is very important there. I might have gone way off there, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, and then the other piece of it is that we, with uh, the multi with the, the idea of it doesn't matter if you're running on-prem or in the cloud or, that is what people need. That's one of the, the true promises of containers has always been is the portability. So seeing the, the delivery of that is huge. And being able to you know, provision it on-prem, on, on Nutanix obviously, because that's where I'm here from. <laughs> but, uh, and being able to provision to the cloud and, and bring those together, that's, that's huge. Well, Chris, you talked about Kubernetes a couple of times now. Yeah. Uh, obviously a big topic here. Seems to be kind of emerging de facto de application deployment uh, configuration you know, for, yeah. for multi-cloud. What's Nutanix doing with Kubernetes? Yeah, so I definitely, uh, Kubernetes is, is really, and in many ways, winning that, that particular battle. I mean, don't get me wrong, Swarm is great and the other pieces are great, but Kubernetes is, is becoming the de facto standard. One of the things we're working on is uh, bringing containers as a service through Kubernetes natively on Nutanix to give you an easy way to manage, to through Prism manage containers just the way you manage VMs, manage Kubernetes clusters. And you know, it's, it's really important that that's, that is just one solution because we, there is a, as many different Kubernetes uh, orchestration engines as you can name, you know, every, any, any name you bring in. So it's that's like why. it's like Linux. The, the back in the day, there are a lot yeah. of different distri distributions, or there's a lot of different <laughs> ways to consume Kubernetes. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, we want to be able to bring a um, opinionated way of doing of consuming Kubernetes to the platform natively. Just as a, so, it's a couple of clicks away. It's very easy to do. But that's not the only way that we're doing it. We're also, um, you know, we we do have a partnership with Docker where we're doing things like deploying Docker EE through Calm or Docker. You know, it's of course all sorts of legalese, but they're work, you know, working on that so it's natively in everyone's Prism Central. You can just one click deploy uh, Docker EE. Um, you know, we, we have a, a demo running in our booth deploying Rancher using um, uh, Calm as well, because we want to be able to provide whatever set of infrastructure makes the most sense for the customer based on, you know, this is what they've used in the past, this is what they're familiar with, or this is what they want. But we also want to offer an opinionated way to deliver a, a, a containers as a service so that those of you that don't know are just trying to get started or, or that that's what they're looking for. This, you know, when you've got um, a thousand choices to make, everyone's going to make slightly different ones. So we, we're, we can't ever offer one, the, no, no one can offer the true, this is the only way to do Kubernetes. We need to offer flexibility across as well. One of the words we hear all the time at Trade Joe's is flexibility. So <laughs> love customer stories. As a customer marketing person, I, I think there's no greater brand validation you can get than the voice of the customer. And I was For looking sure. on the Docker website uh, recently and they were saying, customers that migrate to Docker Enterprise Edition are actually reducing costs by 50%. So, you're a marketing guy. Yeah. What are some of your favorite uh, examples of customers where you, Nutanix is really helping them to just kill it on their container journey? Yeah, so there's a, uh, I'm trying to, Wish I'd thought of this sooner. I should have. <laughs> no, but uh, we have a one of our customers actually. Uh, I this always brings a smile on my face because they they came and saw us last year at the uh, the booth. Uh, they're one of our existing longtime customers, and they're looking to adopt Docker. Um, they came came up and we gave them a demo, showed them how you know all the pieces we're doing, all the and he's just looking at it, he's like, man, I need this in my life right now. And it was mostly a, a demo around uh, uh, Docker 
uh, EE, you know, using the, the unified control plane, showing off, using the Nutanix driver, showing how we can back up the data and protect individual components of the containers uh, in a very, very granular fashion. He's like, man, I need this in my life, this is incredible, and he went and grabbed his friend and ran him over and was like, dude, we're already using Nutanix, look what they can do, and he's, and they, <laughs> perfect example of the, the two kinds of customers. This guy gets like, hold on a second, jumps on the command line, like, oh yeah, I do this all the time from the command line. <laughs> but, you know, that, that was the, the, that light up, uh, the, the, the light in the eyes of the customer there, where they're like, this, I need to be able to see this to be able to use this and be able to integrate this. That's, uh, I, I will not forget that um, anytime soon. That's really what it, why I think we're going down a very good path there. Because the, the, the ability to, when, when you have these, these tinkerers, the people who are really good at code, I mean, I, I spend a lot of time on the command line myself, even though I'm in marketing, so I don't know what I'm doing there. PowerPoints, maybe? But, <laughs> um, you know, just because I can understand it from the command line or an expert can understand it, doesn't mean you can share that. You know, I've been, I've been trying to hand off some of the, the gear that I manage off to another person, and I was like, oh, you just type on all these commands, and they're like, I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> and so, seeing the, the customers be able to, to understand what their, their more, you know, in, more in-depth uh, coworkers have done in a GUI fashion, that's just really, you know, that makes a lot of sense to me, and it's, I like that a lot. Are you seeing any, the last question as, as we wrap up, um, you know, some of the, one of the stats actually that was mentioned in the uh, Docker press release this morning about the new announcements was 85% of uh, enterprise organizations have multi-cloud and then we were talking with Scott Johnston, their chief product officer, that said, you know, upwards of 90% of IT budgets are spent on keeping the lights on for existing applications. So there's a lot of need there for enterprises to go this route. I'm wondering, are you seeing at Nutanix any particular industries that are really um, leading edge here saying, hey, we have a lot of money that we're not use, able to use for innovation. Are you seeing that in any specific industries or is it kind of horizontal? I, to be honest, I've seen it kind of horizontally. I mean, I've had customers, I've, I've spoken to many different customers, mostly around comm because, but, you know, and they come from all different walks of life. You know, I've seen, I've talked to customers from um, you know, SLED, who've been really excited about you know, their ability to, to start you know, better doing Hadoop, because they, they do thousands of Hadoop clusters a, a year for their researchers. I've talked to, you know, in the cloud or on-prem or across, I've talked to um, you know, people in, in governments, I've talked to people in uh, uh, hospitals and, you know, I can imagine oil and gas, some of those industries that have a ton of well, data. Yeah, and, and it's actually, the, the oil and gas is really fascinating because a lot of times they, they like for, in a rig, they want to be able to use compute but they can't really exactly get to a, a cloud. So how do, you, how do you innovate there and on the edge without, you know, how, how do you make a change in the core without making that on the edge and how do you bring those together? And so it's, it's, there's really f a lot of really fascinating things happening around that, but I haven't noticed any one industry in particular, it's, it's across, is that everyone is, um, then again, by the time they get to me, it's probably self-selected, you know? <laughs> but it's, you know, it's across uh, horizontally, is that everyone is looking at how can we use this best, or I just found out this is already being used in my environment because it's super easy, how do I, <laughs> how do I keep a job, or how do I, you know, how do I adopt this and how do I you know, free up um, my investments in, all, in keeping the lights on into, into innovation. How do I save time? How do I, because one of the things that, that I've noticed with you know, all of this cloud adoption or container and all adoption, all of that, is that many times a customer will start making this push, either not, not always from you know, low level, maybe from high level, but they'll start making this push because they hear it's faster and better and that it'll just solve all their problems if they just start using this. And, because they rush into it, they don't often, you know, they don't solve the fundamental problems that gave them the issue to begin with, and so they're just hoping that this new technology fixes it. So now there's, we are seeing some, I am seeing some customers shift back and say, hey, I do want to adopt that, but I need to do it in a smart way, because we just ran to it, and that caused us problems. Well, it sounds like with all the momentum, John, that we've heard, in the keynote, the general session this morning, and with some of the guests, you know, I think even Steve Singh was saying only about half of the audience is actually using containers. So it sounds like with what you're talking about, with what we've heard consistently today, we're sort of the tip of the iceberg. So lots of opportunity. Chris, thank you so much for stopping by theCUBE and sharing with us all the exciting things that are going on at Nutanix with containers and more. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot and we of fun. want to thank you for watching theCUBE. Lisa Martin with John Troyer from DockerCon 2018. Stick around, we will be right back with our next guest.